Hello and welcome to Moments in History. I'm Linda Shenton Matchett, author, speaker, and history geek. While researching my stories, I unearthed tons of intriguing historical information that does not end up in my books. So I've created this channel to share with you those tidbits. I appreciate you stopping by to watch. With yesterday being Thanksgiving here in America, I thought I'd talk about Norman Rockwell and his Four Freedoms painted in 1943. Throughout his political career, Roosevelt often spoke about human rights. In his annual State of the Union address to Congress on January 6, 1941, which would become known as his Four Freedom speech, was delivered when Nazi Germany had overrun most of Western Europe. Despite the fact that the U.S. remained out of the conflict, the President asked the American citizens to support the war efforts in a variety of ways. He stated his vision of a better future founded upon four freedoms, quote, in the future days which we seek to make secure, we look forward to a world founded upon four essential human freedoms, some traditional and some new ones, freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear, unquote. After the U.S. entered the war in December of 1941, three agencies were responsible for war propaganda the Office of Facts and Figures, known as the OFF, the Division of Information of the Office of Emergency Management, known as OEM, and the Office of Government Reports, OGR. The OFF was responsible for commissioned artwork and for assembling a corps of writers led by Librarian of Congress Archibald McLeish. By mid-1942, the Office of War Information determined that despite the efforts of OFF in distributing pamphlets, posters, displays, and other media about Roosevelt's Four Freedoms, only about a third of the general public was familiar with them, and less than 2% of the population could actually enumerate them. Around that time, Rockwell was at the Pentagon getting approval on a piece for which he had been commissioned uh, by the Ordnance Department of the U.S. Army. That same day, he visited with Thomas Mabry of the Graphic Division of the War Department's Office of Facts and Figures, which coordinated war themes, posters, and billboards. Mabry commented about the need for the Four Freedoms artwork. Wanting to do more for the war effort, he decided he would attempt to illustrate Roosevelt's Four Freedoms and returned home to Vermont. Rockwell struggled to come up with a vision for the painting, saying, it was so darned high-blown, somehow I just couldn't get my mind around it. Then one night he attended a town meeting where one man rose among his neighbors and voiced a very unpopular view. And Rockwell realized he could paint the freedoms best from the perspective of his own hometown experiences using everyday simple scenes such as his own town meeting. He took three days to make charcoal sketches before traveling to Washington to propose his poster ideas. He offered to create the paintings at no cost to the government. However, imagine the slap in the face when he was told by the Office of War Information that the last war you illustrators did the posters, this war we're going to use fine artists men, real artists. On his return trip to Vermont, Rockwell stopped in Philadelphia to meet with the new Saturday Evening Post editor, Ben Hibbs, where he presented his Four Freedom sketches. Hibbs loved them and gave the artist two months to complete the works. By June 26, the Post's art editor, James Yates, notified Rockwell of plans for a layout of paintings with an accompanying essay or essays by President Roosevelt. They actually ended up using essays from leading American writers and historians, Booth Tarkington, Will Durant, Carlos Belozan, and Stephen Vincent Benet. The series took seven months to complete and was finished by year end. Reputedly, Rockwell lost 10 pounds from the assignment. Using local res residents as models, he was able to capture what he referred to as human-looking humans. Measuring nearly four feet by three feet, the posters were first exhibited at the West Arlington Grange in Vermont before being sent to the Post, who published them on February 20th, 27th, March 6th, and March 13th of 1943. The publication received millions of reprint requests, so they repro reproduced 25,000 sets, including the essays for a cost of 25 cents 
the equivalent of about $3.91 in 2021. The OWI later got involved and produced an, an additional 2.5 million sets, and by the end of the war, more than 4 million sets had been printed. A month later, the Post donated the Four Freedoms to the second war loan drive that ran for 11 days in Washington, D.C., and then circulated around the country in a 16-city tour with festivities, parades, and speeches that included celebrities, entertainers, and public officials. Bond purchasers receive full-color reproduction sets, and it is estimated that approximately 1.2 million people throughout the U.S. viewed the paintings, which helped raise an astonishing $132 million for the war effort. Rockwell did not accompany the full tour, but did attend events in some of the cities. Exhausted from creating the series, Rockwell stated, The job was too big for me. It should have been tackled by Michelangelo. He commented that the works were serious painting, which sucked the energy right out of the dredges, leaving me dazed and thoroughly weary. Fortunately, his subsequent assignment was to produce the 1943 April Fool's Day cover of the Post, much more enjoyable. President Roosevelt was pleased with the series and wrote to Rockwell saying, I think you have done a superb job in bringing home to the plain everyday citizen the plain everyday truce behind our four freedoms. I congratulate you, not alone on the execution, but also for the spirit which impelled you to make this contribution to the common cause of a freer, happier world. Roosevelt followed that with a letter to the Post, saying, This is the first pictorial representation I have seen of the staunchly American values contained in the rights of free speech, free worship, and our goals of freedom from fear and want. Their words should inspire all who read them with a deeper appreciation of the way of life we're striving to preserve. I hope you've enjoyed today's moment in history. If you'd like to learn even more history, please stop by my blog, located at www.lindashentonmatchett.com. And please consider subscribing to my channel and click the bell icon to receive notifications of new episodes that generally release on the second and fourth Fridays of each month. Thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your day.